Okay, we're good. So week one, class two, we're still under review. Uh, we're re re reviewing the stuff we did last semester. Uh, these are some of the common equipment that we are going to interact with. Solenoid valve. What are solenoid valves? It's a valve that can open and close using a solenoid. It's very important because now you have more control to open and close flow, whether it's gas, fluid, water, uh, oil. Motors, they're gonna be very common. I hardly find any equipment with no motors now for HVAC, so we have to know how to control motors. Relays, relays are the basis of control. There's no control of relays. Everything has a relay. A relay basically is a communication between a <coughs> circuit and a sub-circuit. You activate when two leads, it will open something else, or two, or open and close. So we talked for a week about relays and what they do. And uh, what are other types of relays? Is a relay, and there's something called a contactor, ring a bell. Yeah. There's also a magnetic starter, it's also a relay. So they're all relays. You send a <coughs> signal, low voltage usually, and it does something else. Transformers, what do they do? They transform from cars into robots. Right? <laughs> After this price? Now, transformer transform voltage. Either step up or step down. They can reduce or increase. And they can, be, they can be also very, uh, magnetism. We said every wire has a current around it. We talked about the left hand rule and how you can point your thumb. Left hand rule, right. Left, left hand rule. You point your thumb into the, the direction of the current and the magnetism will go in the direction of your finger. Why do you need that? Probably not a lot, but this is crucial for people who are going to install motorized valves. Yeah, or solenoid valves. Because yeah. what if I reverse polarity, what will happen? Instead of closing it will pull. Yeah. Instead of closing it will pull. So sometimes the polarity is very important. So at least you can have that in your mind in case there's a solenoid valve for gas or oil. And you energize it and it's not open. Maybe you will have reverse that polarity. And polarity doesn't matter. Polarity matters mostly for DC and sometimes also for AC. If you switch the current direction, it will reverse the rotation. That will happen with the inducer fans. In some inducer fans, we can reverse the polarity and we will switch the rotation. Instead of pulling the air, it will push air. Uh, where is that applicable? You will see it in duct system. In duct system, probably in the summertime, you want to reverse the flow. You want the hot air to come from the bottom and the suction from the top. In the summer, you want to reverse. You want the cold air to come from the top and the, uh, the suction to come from the bottom. That's for a, that's for a sophisticated uh, airflow. And actually, it's very nice. Some houses do have that. They have a reversible uh, motor. What is the left hand for a rotor coil? If you have a coil, you coil your, your left hand, your fingers around the coil, and the line is going to be towards your thumb, that's the North Pole. Uh, you don't have to remember that, you can check it on, online if you have to, but you have to understand that polarity does change the direction of the magnet going up and down. Questions? So on a valve, again, we have our, our voltage, AC, it will energize this pin, and this pin will, if you see that the flow is very small area, the pin, will pull up or drop down. Sometimes the solenoid has only one direction, a uh, spring. So there's a spring in here that will push it down. So the default setting is closed and it just opens. You let it go, it's closed. So it's not closing and opening by itself. The closing is going to be using a spring. So the spring is a default. It's normally closed. If you energize it, it will open. And if you look at the floor, if you notice here, the flow goes through a small, small surface area. Why? Pressure. Pressure. And it's easier to move the pin through this small area and stop it. Strike one, guys, you're late. We get three, right? Huh? I said we get three? We get two and a half. <laughs> so it's really easy to control this area 
in comparison to controlling this entire area. The floor here is very strong, so that might be an issue. You cannot like, go against the floor. So if we stifle the floor here and put a pin in it, that will be easier to control. So this one design a solenoid valve. Otherwise, you need a motorized valve. You put a motor on it and you just close the whole thing up and down. You need a lot of resistance for that. Uh, where do we see these? They are very common in uh, zoning. We will work with them. So when you do a zone valve, what is zone valve? If you look at your house, probably you have uh, upstairs and downstairs, and probably there are two zones. And if the upstairs is closed for heat, you open a small valve, a zone valve that will run the water to the second floor. Uh, I think I have one here. Valve. It's controlled by the thermostat. See how small it is? And its job, if you look inside, it's not going to open the entire thing. The flow will go up into the stem and get closed and open. Of course, the resistance of a zone valve is a lot because, again, we are changing the orifice from big to small. So there's a lot of resistance here, a lot of losses. However, it gives you good control. I'll pass it around so you can look. So if you look through the pipe, you're not going to see anything because the whole thing is closed and it's going to go up the valve and back, and the opening is very small. The only way we can see it sometimes, if you want to make sure it's, if it's closed or open, you can put a light in here and look, and make sure there's some kind of light coming up that is closed, it's open. If not, it's closed. So I'll pass it along to you. Look at it. Okay. Questions about solenoids? We will use them in uh, solenoid valves. You'll see them working, and we will use those also for gas. We do the gas lab, you see the gas opening by a solenoid. Uh, what is the difference between a solenoid valve and a motorized valve? The solenoid has a spring. Huh? Spring? Magnet. What else? Magnet. Magnet, what else? Smaller. Smaller? What else? A solenoid only open and close, does not control the flow. A motorized valve can, can, be, can be like half open. Half closed, fully open, fully closed. You can control the, uh, the flow. So you can go half turn, full turn, etc. Motorized valve is slower because it has to turn. Solenoid will pop. Pop open, pop closed. So for reaction, solenoid valve is quick. So, which makes a thing. If we have gas valve, you don't want to open slowly and um, close slowly. You want to be either open or closed. For safety things, you want to be open and closed quickly. Snap, you put in the electricity, it's open, or you drop the thing, it's closed. So the speed makes a difference. We talked a lot about uh, motors. We know all the components. We spend the whole week on motors. You got, you're going to face, uh, I mean, you're gonna see some motors that are shaded pole. Shaded pole do not have capacitors. They come in different configuration. If you see a ca one capacitor, it's probably a stock capacitor. If you see two, two capacitors, probably it's stock capacitor and a run capacitor. So make sure when you look at the motor, you know what type it is and what type of components. Uh, what could go wrong with the motor? Winding can be burnt. Uh, battery <coughs> can be worn out. And by hearing the motor, you can, you can see if it's running or not. If it's too noisy, rattling, something wrong with it. A motor should not be noticeable, it should be very smooth. If you have a new motor for a pump, it should be very smooth that you cannot hear it. The new take of uh, water pumps, you can't even know they're on. You have to go put your hand on it and try to observe the vibration. Okay, even that is impossible. It's so smooth, you don't even feel it. So that means like it's, uh, it's running, it's doing well. Same with your car. I got a car, should, should not know it's on. It's on. You can uh, 
go through the car, you will never know it's on. No vibration, everything is going fine, you should not know it's on or not. Meanwhile, if the car is like imbalanced, something, it's old, the cylinders are like offset, timing is offset, you see a vibration all the time. <laughs> like uh, they used to have a Lexus commercial where they put a cup of water on the dash, and they turn on the car, rev the engine, and the water would not change. That's the graphic design. Yeah, so that, that, that means like everything is well balanced and nothing will, you will not hear anything, you will not feel anything. Uh, we talked about the motor principle. I uh, don't want to dwell too much on that. I think we covered that plenty. Relays. Relays are very important. Why, again? Because it's the basis for control. We don't do a lot of control. How do you think the primary control <coughs> opens and closes the circuits? Relays. Sometimes relays are accompanied with uh, timers. You have relays, timers, and uh, what else? Sometimes also voltage conversion. But uh, there's a simple relay. And relay consists of three things. Coil, mechanical linkage, and contacts. These are the contacts. The new, the new uh, Honeywell controls, they have solid state relays. What does solid state mean? No moving part, thank you. No moving part, which means it's a transistor, and it's a semiconductor, like you activate it to turn on the circuit on and off. You'll see still a few, few contacts here, and the reason for that is, if you hear a click and there is a physical contact, probably the voltage is high. So small contacts that have low voltage can operate with a semiconductor and solid state. If you have a lot of voltage, you will need actual contacts. For example, the, the contactor for the AC has to be mechanical. So the voltage is really hard to control. Transformers. Again, we have primary and secondary. What is the primary? It's whatever you supply. Secondary is whatever you get out of it. Input is primary, secondary, is output. So it has nothing to do with the amount of voltage. So for the igniter, our what is our secondary for ignition? What is our primary? How much is the primary? How many volts? 20. 150, 120. That's the input. That's the that's the primary winding. Secondary winding, guys. Secondary winding. No. Ignition. Igniter. 10,000, that's a lot of winding. So a lot of winding, I'll take that. Someone's sitting here. A lot of copper. <laughs> so if you have a lot of voltage, that means a lot of winding. That's why the transformer, uh, ignition transformer is very heavy. A lot of winding to give you that 10,000 volts. Uh, Smaller voltage means smaller winding. You'll see transformers a lot for uh, control. For thermostat, for example, what, what voltage is, is the thermostat? This question is guaranteed to be in your, in your uh, oil burning zone. 24 volts. And do not, it's very important to know that most control is 24 volts. If you see any control volt, aquastat, primary control, thermostat, uh, sometimes valve. So only about 24 volts is enough. And intentionally, they try to make the controls low voltage, especially like thermostat, so on and above. Why? Okay, but why is it low voltage? So people are touching them to safety. Yes, thank you, safety. You want things that we control safety very low voltage. And what else? When 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 uh, when thing is, is low voltage, what happens? The size of it shrinks. Shrinks. It's smaller. Is it control? Because we are doing control. We're not, we're not moving anything. So 24 is enough. <coughs> the less the better. Uh, the more we make things very small with small wires, the less power they consume. That's why your phone is very small. The the wiring is just printed. So 
very, very small voltage. It's millivolts, how it runs, milliamps. So the smaller they are, they are the less voltage they will use, and safer they are. So, uh, most controls are 24 volts, and that's for safety, and also because it's what we interact with, we don't want to put 110 volts as a control. If something goes wrong and somebody touch it, there might be that. What are other equipment capacitors? What is what is a capacitor? Charge. So it charges. You know, it's great, but it's a charge. What is it, what is the difference between a battery and a capacitor? Yeah. Okay. What else? One thing. There is no current. No flow. Uh, capacitor will give you a spark at once. It will dump everything on you. A battery will slowly discharge. So the battery, they both have charge, they both have energy. A battery will slowly give you current, there's flow. But the capacitor is like at once. Whatever you store in it, you get it as soon as you touch it. What is the unit for a capacitor? Microfarads. Micro microfarads. For the longest time, that was my name. Every time I'm eating, there's a new name. I got Farhad, I got Fahid, I got like, it's not too easy. <laughs> but uh, I think it was Farhad, and then I was okay, I'll go with it. It's fine. <laughs> 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 that's cool. Uh, bearings, we either have sleeve bearing, which there's no spheres in it, no rollers in it. Just like metal and metal, sometimes metal and plastic. I think that plastic uh, is covered with silicon or Teflon to make it very smooth. Uh, or you can have ball bearing with seized, I mean, not seized, I mean, sealed grease in it so it will keep running. Uh, some motors require you to loop the bearing once a year and it has a small reservoir that you put some oil in it. It has some wick, so pay attention to that. Uh, again, um, I'm gonna tell you advice that I don't use all the time, which is read the instructions. I'm trying to force myself to read the instructions, but it's really difficult sometimes. It's not get into it, you know. So I'm not gonna say that I do it, but uh, I'm trying to at least skim over the instructions. I look at least at the warnings. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's very, very, it saves you a lot of time, but it's just I understand it's kind of too much, but. And they try to make it smaller and smaller. They don't give you a book anymore. They give you, okay, this is what you really, really need to know before you finish this thing. So we read the instructions. Zone valves, there are solenoids connected to a valve. Uh, testing equipment. Who feels very proficient with uh, the multimeter now? <laughs> Come on. We spend a lot of time multimeters. So if you did not, I want you to be friendly with the multimeter. Uh, know how to measure resistance, current, voltage, AC and DC, uh, capacitors, this is going to be your best friend. So if you can come out of this course by just knowing how to use the multimeter properly, you may be very happy. <laughs> Seriously, you cannot do anything without a multimeter. It's, uh, it's your best friend. It's, how you, it's what you can use for troubleshooting to make your life easier. Uh, and the first thing before you do anything, just test electricity. So if you can just master that, I think you'll, be, you'll do great. Because if you understand voltage and ohms and current for now, but at least electricity you don't see, unlike water. Water you can hear it, you can feel it. Electricity you don't see, you don't know what's happening. And uh, the first thing you do, you go to the equipment, test the voltage. And test that you have the right voltage. If you cannot test, if you do not know how to properly test voltage, this is uh, from the beginning. We can, from the get-go, we cannot do anything. Are you getting 110 or are you getting 90? Which is possible. So always test for the voltage. Make sure you're getting the proper voltage before you start the system. So testing is very important. And uh, the more tools you have, the better, especially when you start. Luckily, there's a tool for everything now. <coughs> there's a tool for removal. How to remove things, there's a tool for like opening all different kinds of sockets. How to the proper tool will enable you to do the job with the least frustration. Uh, okay, can we pause? It says stop.